Hi everybody, Louise here with my 144 topics and the topic this week is about preventative health um, and about why as a leader would you want to promote the health and well-being of your employees. Well, I did a blog this week and I spoke about the five, six different phases of diseases according to the Home of Toxicology and if you wanted to check that out, go to my louiseplant.com.au page to check out the blog there. Um, and really it was just talking about the fact that, you know, that, that it's a lot easier to be doing preventative health than what it is to be treating disease. So, you know, if you were an employer and you had people that you're employing, then it would really be in your best interest to be supporting the health of these people for a number of reasons. Um, because basically when people are healthier and happier, their productivity is always going to be more efficient. Um, they're going to be happier in their working environment. They're going to be uh, more supportive of you. I remember having some coaching some time back, and you know, and I, and I was advised by the co my coach at the time, and he sort of said to me that, you know, when you've got staff and people working for you, you know, it, a good question that you can actually ask them is, is you know, what what is it that they want out of life? Is there something that they've always wanted to achieve, something that they've always wanted to do, something that's always, they've always wanted to happen, you know, and you never know what could happen because paths might cross, things might be aligned, and you might actually be in a situation to help support them in that and provide them in that. And once you can build that rapport and that connection with any relationship, and this doesn't really just imply to employees, um, you know, once you've got that rapport where, you know, you've, you've got their back in, in the fact that you're supporting them through their health and their well-being, then, you know, they're going to also have your back. So they're going to be more supportive of you, they're going to be more loyal to you, they're going to be more dedicated to you. So we know that when we're in a happier and a healthier state of mind, you know, things flow for us, you know, we tend to catch all the green lights rather than the red lights. Um, you know, so with that people are going to be happier in their working environment and that can have its effect can be put out there. So, you know, it's, it's quite known in certain realms and certain spaces that, you know, say for instance you're working in hospitality, you know, if people are happier then that energy and that vibration will go into the food that they're doing, into what they're making, into what they're preparing. When people are happier, you know, all that those good vibes are basically going to go into there. And in intent's really important, like it's, it's very, very important. And in some ways it can be almost 50%, you know, we've heard of the placebo, placebo having an effect, you know, 50% is the placebo effect. So if people believe they're taking a tablet that it's going to help them for a certain issue or condition, you know, if they take that, then 50% of people will actually improve just through the placebo effect. So intent is very important. There was also a study that was done in Melbourne with an uh, a English uh, music teacher, and he started looking at the intent of piano players from a very, very young age. So these were like pre-primary or primary school kids, and he followed them all the way through. And you know, in his study, the basically the results were that those who had a very young intention, you know, a, a solid intention from a young age of like, you know, I want to be a pianist, I just I just want to play, I just love music, far excelled those. So, you know, the, the, the group that excelled most were those that were committed and dedicated to um, regularly practicing their music and to those who had the belief or the intent that they wanted to be an amazing pianist. So intent is very important and having the intent of you know, supporting your workplace, your work colleagues, your employees is going to just um, come back tenfold to you um, and that's going to bounce and re -back, rebound back again. So in my blog, you know, I wrote about things that you can consider and probably one thing that we tend to forget is that when we become sick or we're crook, as we say in Australia, that we tend to forget that, you know, recuperation is an integral and important part of that. And it's really important to have the time out to rest and to relax and to, yeah, just allow yourself time to let your body rest. So I've said it many times, your body will never lie to you, it will always guide you to, you know, whatever's going to be there for your highest and greatest good. And if you're getting the message just to take it easy and to relax, um, then maybe you're best following that. 
So I just want to add a bit of a final note in the fact that, you know, when we look at the disease process and sickness, sometimes, you know, we can see it as a bad thing, but we can also reframe it and look at it in another way. And another way that we can actually look at it is the fact that the body is doing, is creating this scenario because it's trying to protect itself. So, you know, the body's primary focus is always going to be on organs that are most important, um, heart, lungs, brain. Brain's always going to be the primary organ. So the body's going to do whatever it can do to preserve those organs and keep them functioning properly. And to do that, it might then take energy um, or, you know, it might take vitality away from other parts because they're not as important. So, you know, being mindful of, of where diseases are in your body, different things can be meaning different things. You know, I was reading this morning about thighs uh, relating to possibly childhood traumas and things like that. You know, backs all very much support. Legs carry us forward. They keep us standing where we are. So, you know, whatever conditions are actually going on for, you know, your employees or people around you is always going to be an indication of something that needs to be addressed. So other ways that you possibly could support your employees is if you have a network of people and therapists or, you know, physicians or, you know, someone who um, is very effective at, you know, healing and helping to facilitate the whole healing process is even to refer people onto, onto those, you know, re refer, refer your employees onto those people because you know that they're going to be in safe hands you know that they're going to basically, um, yeah, their, their health's going to be addressed. Having said that, it is really important as a leader to know what your boundaries are. And if you believe that you have employees who are working for you and they're really sort of taking you for a ride a little bit, so it's really important to have your boundaries in place about that and to know what it, you know, what is it like, you know, what, what is acceptable and what's not acceptable. And the other thing that might be worth, you know, keeping in mind is, you know, if you were to put yourself in that, that other person's shoes, what would it be like having you as a boss? Um, you know, what what's that like? What's the dynamics like there? You know, are there other ways that you can help and support them? So other ways that you can help and support them is to look at, you know, being positive, having a positive outlook, having a positive uh, surrounding yourself in the workplace with positive things, um, you know, uh, focusing very much on what people want, what makes them happy, as fo as a much as, fo you know, rather than focusing on what the problems are, what conditions they have, what doom and gloom there is about that, and just really being supportive for them and allowing them to have the space to, to be validated. We all want to be validated. We all want to be heard. You know, we all want to be understood. So having some of those characteristics and traits as a leader is always going to be very beneficial to allow you to empath with people, um, not to sympathise. So my belief is that sympathy can weaken the soul, but empathy can be um, a more understanding thing. So with sympathy, we can end up taking on people's stuff, but with empathy, we can acknowledge where they're at um, and not take that on or wear it. So that's really important too. So the only other thing as a leader is to know where your focus is, know where your direction is, know what it is that you're wanting to be achieving, have really good communication in the workplace. That's always going to help people to feel safe and secure. And, you know, one of our primary needs is safety and security. Um, Maslow's given that as one of his seven primary uh, needs there that we need to have fulfilled. So just knowing that you're able to fulfill the, that as well is always going to be beneficial. So, if you ever want any more help and support, read my blog and it sort of gives you the breakdown of the disease state and how diseases move further and further in. Um, and the more you have an understanding of that, the more you can actually, well for me, I'm able to look at people, connect with people, clients that I have, I can quite easily look at them and say, okay, the disease process is going in and what we need to be doing is to reverse that around and allow the body to go through its healing crisis and its healing. You know, when we have a cold, it's often the body's indication that the body's crying is one way that I tend to, to, to do that. And of course, if we suppress that, if we don't allow the, the body to do what it wants to do, which is to express itself, to have a little cry, or have a little release, have a little let go, 
then you know that can escalate onto onto other things. So you know, being a good ear, listening ear, we've got um, two ears and one mouth. So learning to listen, learning to communicate, learning to offer support, have an understanding of what your employees want to be doing, acknowledging the fact that you know they might need time out for rest and recuperation, and just having a general rapport with them where you feel connected to them, you're understanding. Um, you know, you're validating them, it is just really going to be priceless. So until next week, we shall catch up. You have a wonderful uh, time. If you want to have any coaching sessions with me or healing sessions with me, then feel free to contact me. Otherwise, have a fabulous time and I shall see you next time. Always in love and light and always seeing you in health and happiness. Until then, bye. Thank you.